Well, hello, everyone. I have to switch the camera around here. There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my studio. It's Dina Tollefson. I'm so glad that you're here today. Today is going to be a great one. We're going to be trying out some new paints and testing them out and see how they perform. And I'm so glad that you're here. So let me get everything straightened here. I'll get the camera angle correct. All right, so, um, so in today's um, sh uh, live stream, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through these new paints that I just got. So, uh, so here are my golden paints that I normally use, but I was gifted these My Paints uh, professional acrylic paint set from the My Paints people. And so um, I did not buy these. Um, I was gifted these, and uh, in exchange for this, I was asked to give an honest review of my opinion of how they perform. So I want to also say hello to everyone who's here. I see that Dietrich is here, and Gracie is here, and Bill is here. Um, oh, Zargo is here. Davey's here. Thank you all so much for being here today. And also, if you... Um, if you want to be quiet, uh, you can be quiet on the live stream. If you'd like to join in on the live stream and talk, then I welcome you um, to, to say hello and, and all of that. So, so it'll be a lot of fun if we can all interact together. Now, I'm having a, <laughs> I'm having a t I always seem to have a technical difficulty. I don't know what it is. My camera set up here. Let me see if I can arrange this so it's a little bit better. There we go. There, is that any better? Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, so um, and let me get this uh, microphone thing up here and now change the angle. I tell you, this, uh, there's always something that goes, you know, when you're, when you're setting something up, there's always something that, <laughs> that wants to go a little crazy. All right, so these My Paints, I don't know, have any of you guys ever tried the My Paints? Uh, paint at all. Um, if you have, and oh, and also, um, hey, Maddie Kitty is here. Um, have you guys ever tried these My Paints? This is my first time using them, and I thought what we'd do is an unboxing, and then also compare them, and I need to again adjust this thing. It's like my camera is, let me move this a little bit this way. The camera is wanting to kind of shift all over. Look at this, now we're going completely sideways. How do I fix this? Let me see here, what can I do to fix this? Let me get that, ah, there we go. That's more like it. You guys are so patient, I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> hanging with me while I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, so anyway, I have these 12 Arteza acrylic colors, uh, the premium acrylic. Um, I was also gifted these by Arteza, friends at Arteza, and I thought what we would do is compare the Arteza brand with the My Paints, and then have those go head to head with the gold, the gold standard, the golden acrylics. And these are the acrylics that I use uh, most of the time in my art practice. And um, I did a little, um, I guess, kind of a, I guess, what would you call it? A, um, I did a, uh, what do you call that? Uh, what do you call it? I guess it's a, uh, oh, and Meg is here too. Hi, Megan. Um, I did a, a survey. That's it. I did a survey uh, asking everybody, what is your favorite paint? Is it golden? Is it my paints? Is it Arteza? Is it something else? And um, a lot of you uh, wrote in and said that you like gold in the best. But then I also had um, also some responses from other folks who were saying that, uh, that they preferred a different brand. So, um, so I thought what we could do is maybe kind of just see, you know, is one brand better than the other? And if so, then, uh, you know, we might change our opinion. I guess I always thought that golden was the way to go. But I want to really honestly test these things out and then see because... At the end, we'll talk about price, and price is a huge discriminator here um, with these paints. Uh, it's a big, um, a big factor. All right, so now, and on, I'm continuing to uh, move this camera around here. Are we a little cockeyed? And also, can you guys hear me okay? Okay, and Megan, you're saying that you think that Golden is going to win. 
And you know what? I'm kind of hoping that Golden is going to win because that's the one I use all the time. <laughs> so um, let's get started here with opening this. All right, so what do we get here? We get a little palette, a cute little paint palette. That's cute. And in here, it looks like some information about the paint and a set of brushes. All right, let's move this over here. Let's open these brushes up and see what they're like. How many do we get here? One of them's got a little issue here with the, and the bristles, yeah, the bristles soften up. It looks like this is a Taclon, a golden Taclon. Five eighths inch brush, three eighths inch angled brush. I'm just gonna wiggle this a little bit to get the sizing off, but these brushes look like they're like they're okay. Oh, a little liner brush. This is a brush that you use uh, when you sign your name. And then they have these little protective sleeves over them uh, so that in transport they don't ruin a round brush, size eight. All right, so that's a bonus. I was not expecting these little brushes, so that's kind of nice. So we'll try out the brushes today too. And then in here, this is what is inside, and uh, let's see here. And then, um, Megan, you're saying um, the paints come with so many things. Yeah, this is, and then, um, and then Bill is saying that the sound is coming through well. These good, okay, good. Um, I think we finally, <laughs> I finally got the setup right here. All right, and then, um, and then Dietrich is saying, is your music too loud? Okay, now I don't have any music on Daddy. Maybe the music is in, um, maybe it's over by you guys. And then uh, Davy is saying hi to Dietrich. Okay, so it looks like, let's see what colors we get here. So um, what I'm used to, this is these are supposed to be, this says here that they're high viscosity. So they're supposed to be a heavy, a, like not like a fluid acrylic. They're supposed to be a, um, like an acrylic that you get, like a heavy bodied acrylic. So that'll be the first thing I'm gonna wanna know is um, how thick are they? Since they came in this squeeze tube, I'm wondering, or they, hopefully they're not super liquidy. Hopefully they have a nice thick texture to them. Looks like we've got, let's see, ultramarine blue, crimson red, pink, sky blue, that's a pretty one. What else do we have here? Thalo cyanine blue, magenta red. Chrissy, if you watch this later, magenta. Uh, pale purple, permanent red. We, get it. we have a lot of paints here in this one box. And each one, it looks like each one is two fluid ounces. Let's see here, what are the other colors? We've got lemon yellow, black, gray, Mid yellow. We've got a white, titanium white, sand. This looks like a little bit like a yellow ochre kind of color, a nice neutral. And then, oh, Easy Arts is here. Oh, and Christina is here. And then how much was this box? Okay, and Megan, we'll go through. I've actually got a list of everything I want to cover today here. Uh, we're going to talk about pigment load, which means um, how much, uh, when, you, when you have the paint itself, how much color is actually in it. And if you can think of this a little bit like chocolates, like if you go to the store and you get like kind of an inexpensive chocolate, it might be kind of waxy and not super chocolatey. But if you get like the Godiva chocolates, it's like a super intense chocolate experience. Uh, what we're gonna look at is pigment load. So I am guessing, so these my paints are super inexpensive. The Arteza is next as expensive, and then the Golden are quite expensive. So my guess is that the Golden will have more pigment, but we're gonna actually test that out today. Oh, and look at Elf is here, and hi Elf, thank you for being, and also thank you everyone for being here today. And um, um, I think what will also be an important thing here is the feel. How does the paint feel while we're painting? That's kind of a key thing. Does it feel gummy? Does it feel smooth? Um, how, does it, how does it work on the canvas? I have a, um, a journal here 
that we're going to be doing the testing on, and I'm also going to have us do a test on a little piece of canvas. So I've got, uh, so canvas, this is, uh, I buy this on rolls, but this is basically gessoed canvas. This would be like on a stretched cotton canvas. Uh, when you paint on paper with acrylics, the um, paper sucks up the water. And when you paint on a gessoed surface, it just kind of sits on the top. So it'll be important to really kind of test both of those. All right, so let's see here. And yeah, and Megan, the feel of the paint absolutely does matter. It totally does. Um, yes, and Daddy, yes, it's wonderful. And Easy Arts, it's so, and oh, and Aisha's Crafty Kids Club, hi. Hey, welcome, everyone. You guys are wonderful. Um, all right, now let's look and see what's on this side here. We've got spring green, burnt sienna. Oh, and also, back on our list, uh, color impression. So what does the color look like? Is it a good color? Is it chalky looking? Light fast. Now, uh, light fast is something that not a lot of people talk about, but it is pretty much everything in paint. So is something light fast? Uh, what's the color like when it's dried? And then the all important cost. So these are important considerations uh, when you're choosing a paint. And um, so let's, uh, oh yeah, let's see, we've got a couple more colors here to look at. Prussian green, silver, ooh, silver, nice. Gold, and the last one here, um, phthalo cyanine green. Okay, so, and then over with the uh, Arteza, and again, the Arteza, I did not purchase these Arteza. I was given these as a gift from friends at Arteza. And <coughs> Excuse me. And I, um, I have really not done much with them yet. So it'll be a really good experiment to compare these with these My Paints. And then the Golden Acrylics, I did buy these on my own, and I purchased these, so... I do want, I'm, I'm going to be super curious to see. I've been spending a lot of money on these golden acrylics. And, you know, should I be? Should I be using Arteza instead or should I be using my paints? That's kind of a, a question I've got here. And then Easy Art says, yeah, for me, the cost comes first. And it is, it is super important. And so let's see what you guys are saying here. And then Zargo is saying, I did a bit of search. It seems that they're sold under the name of. Art Echo in Europe. Oh, Art Echo, okay. And then, um, yeah, so Meg, when it comes out more watery, it's terrible when that happens. Um, now the Arteza colors here, we've got Crimson Red, Burt Sienna, Scarlet Red, Yellow Ochre, Lemon Yellow, Titanium White, Pale Green, Phthalo Green, Ultramarine Blue, Phthalo Blue, Burnt Umber, and Mars Black. So um, what we'll do now is let's move this over here. Let's move this container. And I have actually a container for each of the different brands so we can keep them separate. So let's get a, I've got a Stay Wet palette, just an empty Stay Wet palette, and we'll put a name tag here with this. So this will be our Arteza. And then we've got a Stay Wet palette just because I want to try and keep all of these separate and keep, keep it as a legitimate test so we don't mix up our paints. Then we have over here the My Paints. And then I will open up, I was working before the live stream, I was uh, working on a painting and I have my larger Stay Wet palette. I already have some colors in here. So let's move this over here. So this is the this is the gold and acrylics. And I can add a little bit more paint here. So I thought what we would do first is let's uh, do a test with ultramarine blue. And that's this one right here. All right, I'm going to wipe. Ooh, I just dropped that. Um, some of the, um, the Arteza colors, let me just grab those. Those fell on the ground here. Let me pick those up. Well, I can report that the packaging, you can drop it on the floor and nothing happens. You just have to put them back in the tube. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, um, Zargo, you're saying you've tried Arteza, they were okay, but not, you don't trust the light fast ratings on their stuff. And then, um, 
and easier to say in the premium brands uh, that you can go with are the student acrylic. Um, so yeah, so it'll be actually interesting to see, uh, you know, do they look demonstrably different or not? All right, so in the Arteza, let's get our ultramarine blue going. And we'll get a little bit of that right there. Okay, and then let's get now here's the test. This is going to be interesting to see how thick. Do I have to shake it or not? I don't know. We'll test it over here. Yeah, I'm beating the devil out of those paints. I am, Megan, I am. Is it going to squeeze out? Why is it not coming out? Ah. It's got a protective thing. Interesting. Okay. It's got a little thing covering the, let's get our cover back on. We'll give a little squeeze here. Okay, hey, that's a nice consistency. All right, so that, that answered that first question, is was it gonna be all like um, liquidy? And the answer is no, it's not super liquidy, so that's good. And now let's take our thing and and also, just uh, for a moment, I also want to just talk about, let's talk a little bit about light fastness here. So light fastness means um, how is it going to handle over time? So it's your stability, your paint stability when you, um, when you uh, take the paint and you put it next to UV light. So Zargo just brought up about the light fastness with some of these companies and about how the, some of the stuff seems to be contradictory. I'll show you on your paint tubes how you can tell what type of light fast model they used. So there is a thing, a company called, or a society called the ASTM, or the American Society for Testing and Materials. And they do, they are an a independent firm, and then the paint company will say, okay, ASTM, you do my ratings, and then whatever you come up with, I'll put that on my paint label. So uh, Golden, for example, uses ASTM, and you can tell because that'll actually say it right up here on your label, and then the number, so this first thing with the square, that says, like, is it um, uh, how opaque or how transparent is it? But this symbol right here, see the one on here? The one stands for excellent, and so that means that your paint um, is going to be not changing in its composition or its color for more than 100 years, which is great news if you are selling your artwork or you're uh, making maybe an heirloom piece and you want to make sure that it can be passed down for generations. Um, using paint that has got a one rating guarantees that your paint will be stable. And also the number one um, out, that pigment can be used outdoors, not necessarily the paint itself, but that pigment in a, like an outdoor formulation can be used outdoors. Uh, number two rating is very good, but it's for indoor only. Now you wouldn't have it outdoors. And then number three means it's a fugitive color. And what do we mean by fugitive color? Um, so if you look at, uh, have you ever done that where you guys look at, um, like you paint the wall, and then you have a piece of furniture sitting on it and you move the piece of furniture away and you look and the wall all around it is light in color and then back behind that wall it's a dark original color. That uh, wall paint or paint that we put on the wall um, is fugitive. The colors will tend to fade over time and also the paint like on the outside of a house, outside of a building, on a sign, that kind of thing the paint degrades and fades over time. So they were not using number one or even number two kind of paint. They were using, or we're using when we paint indoors, uh, the walls. Uh, we use a, a, like a number three or a pour or a fugitive kind of paint. Now here's the interesting thing with these paint companies. So I want to show you on, um, where did, okay, the Arteza colors. Where are you with your colors? There is a, and is it here? Oh, here. Okay, so actually on the Arteza, 
thing. Do you see that instead? It doesn't say anything about ASTM. It just has plus signs. So when companies do not use ASTM and they use their own testing, then what they do is they do a system of plus signs. So three pluses means that the company says it'll be excellent and last for over 100 years. Two plus signs means it's very good and should last 25 to 100 years. One plus sign means it's eh, kind of you know okay, but it will expect the paint to change in 10 to 25 years. And then zero means it's going to last less than 10 years. Now, this is the thing to note, is each company is going gonna, is gonna to do their own testing, and they're going to say, oh, I'm giving it this rating. And so uh, my paints, for example, they've got, for example, on the ultramarine blue, also three star or three plus signs. So you'll notice three plus signs is excellent, but um, the number, Roman number three in ASTM is poor. So a lot of people get that confused and they say, oh, look, um, ASTM gives it one, one star and that's excellent, but if it gets three plus signs, it's excellent. So that's the difference is it's a whole different grading scale. Almost think of this like A, B, C, and this is like one, two, three or something like that. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind with your light fast. Yeah, it's information on the light fastness. Um, so Daddy, thank you about the light fastness thing. It's a, it's a thing that confuses a lot of people, but it is so very, very important. Um, what kind of paint you're using, how long do you want it to last? If it's something where you're like, you know what, I don't really care, then use house paint. Uh, you guys might uh, be familiar with, um, oh, what's the artist? Who's the guy that did the paint? And he kind of just, he had his cigarette and he kind of was wiggling his paint around. Not Rothko. Who was the one? You guys, put, uh, tell, me in the, um, tell me in the comments if you remember who that artist is. Uh, oh, wait, Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock. Um, yes, Jackson Pollock Bill, exactly. Uh, so he used a lot of house paint, and all the people, not all the people, but some of the collectors and some of the museums have had, now it, enough years have gone by, and by golly, his paint colors, some of them are fading, some of the paint is going off of his canvases, uh, because he chose to use a um, paint that was not light fast. So, um, so that's just something to keep in mind uh, just for future. Okay. Now let's do a test. Let me grab my book here. And let's do a little test and see how this uh, ultramarine blue holds up. OK, so where am I going to put this? I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to slide this one here. And then we'll move the Arteza over here. And let's put the book right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, paintbrush and let's just try and see how does this paint perform for us when we put it on a pe on paper so we're going to start first with the golden so i've got the golden right here let's get a little bit of that going and we're going to put that i'm going to and i i put it right on top of the that black line because i also want to show you like how transparent is it? And then we can also take a look at what do we think of the color itself, the pigment. So let's just kind of get this over here until we have just a light amount. And just kind of work that in and get it kind of brushy over there. So we have a thick application here and then kind of thicker and then moving over to just brushy and thin. And then, yeah, Bill does know his artist. Yeah, he knows his fabrics, too. Um, the cigarette in his videos. Oh, my gosh, Megan, that is funny. If you know who that is, um, I, would <laughs> I would love to, to watch this guy. Um, OK, so let's try the Arteza Ultramarine Blue. And let's put some on. Whoops, let's get a little bit more on. There we go. All right, so. And let's get this 
going up here and then just kind of light and brushy over here. And now let's try the my paints. I'm going to get the same kind of brush. So here's our my paints. Get that over here. Ah, I can already tell. I don't know if you guys can see that. Do you see that it's like uh, almost like it's watered down? It's not the pigment on here is not coming out as um, it's almost like it's like uh, pale. In other words, the um, I can see it. I don't know if that shows up on camera or not, but the color when I'm putting it on is almost like a um, not a it's not a, it's not a rich color, I guess what it would be. It's kind of a um, more see-through or more transparent, not as pigmented. I guess that's it. It's not as pigmented. Oh yeah, Megan, let us know in the in the comments who this guy is. Okay. My tests are always top tier. Well, thank you so much for saying that. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and you guys are so nice. A little paler, Bill. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, let's rinse these brushes out and let's try the next color. So um, it's important uh, when you're evaluating new paint, it's really important to not just try it with one color. You want to definitely try with multiple different colors. Um, and so now uh, in the golden, we're going to do that with, and I've got, and if you can see here, so the golden, we're going to be using uh, primary yellow in the golden. All right, so that is this one right here. And I'll add just a little bit more to the container, the paint container. There we go. So that's going to be our yellow. And the reason, you might wonder why am I picking ultramarine blue and yellow? Um, these are like really commonly used colors, and these particular colors you can make. Let's see, let's find this now in the My Paints. Let's get this over here and find that yellow. There's a mid yellow. We think we want a lemon. Yeah, lemon yellow. All right, so here's the My Paints tray. Let's get some. Oh, whoops, you know what? I'm going to have to take that coating off the protective thing here. I'm going to need to take that thing off. Okay. There's that yellow. Okay. Let's get the lid on. Is it, It's more diluted, Christina. Yes, it is. Absolutely is. This My Paints, it's more, it's more dilute. Even though it's thicker as it, when it comes out, it, uh, it doesn't have as much pigment in it. Okay, and so that was the My Paints. All right, and now we need to do the Arteza. And let's get the lemon yellow in the Arteza. When I was tossing these on the floor, let's see here if we can get it. Here we go. Here's the lemon yellow of the Arteza. All right, so let's get that in this tray right here. There we go. And you can already see here, just between the My Paints and the Arteza. The Arteza is looking more like the golden as far as its texture. And um, I guess would this be more like toothpaste kind of consistency? And that's maybe more like a mayonnaise or mustard kind of a consistency when it's coming out. Okay, so now we're going to take and let's try the Arteza the lemon yellow, and we're going to put that on. That's Wow, that's very transparent. Uh, let's just get the yellow up over here, lightly applying it. But that's a, that's a lovely, nice yellow. All right, so the next one to try is the My Paints. Let's try that. This is their lemon yellow. And let's put that on. And again, when I'm putting it on, it does not have as thick of a feel. I'm going to tip this up. Can you guys can maybe see 
what I'm talking about. Do you see that the Arteza is leaving brush marks, but the My Paints does not leave a brush mark. It doesn't go on as thickly. Um, it, uh, the brush marks go settle right out immediately. All right, and then we'll try the same thing now with golden. So here's our golden. Now the golden, it's not a lemon yellow. This is their primary yellow. All right, and that has a really good feel when you put it on. You see it uh, holds the brush strokes well and the, it's uh, got a very nice pigment. All right. You can also see there's a slight difference in color, but the primary yellow is not supposed to be a lemon. That these two, comparing the two lemon colors, I'll say that they look pretty similar, actually. And uh, they look pretty similar in their color. And I think that that's going well. OK, and then the last thing we'll try here is let's try black. So let's get the black from the golden. So and I've got that right here. This is a Mars black. And where did you go, Mars black? Hmm. Are you over here? No, that's diarylide yellow. Let's see, where are you, Mars black? Here we go. Mars black was hiding in his box. OK, so Mars black over here. Golden is a mix of both. Yeah, it is kind of like that. Your paint looks like digital art. Yeah, a little less pigment, exactly. Yeah, and Dietrich, it is an interesting thing to test this out. OK, so here's our Mars Black in the golden container. All right, and then now in my paints, Let's get the black out of the my paints. Oh, that one was this one here. All right, and I know already we're going to have to take that little protective thingy off. We'll pop that over there. Okay, and my paints uh, black. And again, this they're saying that this has got three plus signs for light fastness. All right, and then the other one we need is the Arteza. So let's get our Arteza black. And where did you go? Arteza black. Here we go, Mars black for Arteza. Let's try this guy here. Oh, yeah, OK. And that, again, we can see a texture difference right away. You see that the Arteza is coming out again more like a, um, oh, like, like a soft butter kind of thing or mayonnaise like the golden is. And the My Paints is coming out again like a toothpaste kind of consistency. And that, ooh, what did I do here? Something is, so somehow I got blue on here. I somehow dipped into. Where did the blue go? I got blue on my fingers here. I got, I dipped into the, oh, I see what I did. I dipped into my golden turquoise color here. Let me just wipe that off. Hold a moment. All right, let's get a, get that wiped off. I'm gonna dip my finger in here. Well, we can't have dirty fingers when we're doing an experiment. There we go. OK, so what we're going to do now is let's put these on and see how they perform. Put that in the trash. OK, so where is our paintbrush? Let's start first with the Arteza and the black. That's a nice, rich, dark black, which is what you want in a black. I'll say in black. It's really important when you pick a black paint or a brand of paint, you want your blacks to be rich and dark. So that one is the Arteza is definitely performing 
how we would want it to. Uh, let's try now the golden. That's over here. And, um, oh, the pair of a pair. Oh, thank you, Christina. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is an example of my uh, Dalbism work. And, oh, my goodness. Now, here is, this is very interesting. So this golden, the black, is extremely rich in color, highly pigmented. Highly, highly pigmented. Wow. Okay, I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not, but there is a visible difference here between them, uh, which was which here. All right, and now let me get another paintbrush. Actually, you know what? We'll use one of the, let's use one of the paintbrushes that came with the set. We'll give it, we'll test that out. We'll do a double test here. Okay, so here's the, um, my paints, black, make sure we get the same amount on, and that one is looking pretty good too. It is, well, it doesn't go as far. In other words, it's dark, but I don't feel like it feels as smooth on the paper at all. And then we have that same phenomenon again. Can you guys see that? Okay, if uh, from this angle I can see, uh, brush mar marks are showing up on um, the golden and the Arteza, but it's just kind of sucking right into the paper, not seeing a good set of brush marks uh, with the my paints, which is an, an interesting uh, a phenomenon or a problem or concern or whatever. Um, we do want our acrylics, the heavy bodied acrylic, that's part of the beauty of the heavy bodied acrylic, is you're going to expect it to hold up at your brush marks. Um, so that is a down thing with the my paints. Um, but now, um, let's go through our list and then see. Uh, we had a list of things, so we, we talked about light fastness. I want to look and just see here. Where was our list? Oh, over here. Uh, pigment load, we talked about that. How does it feel when we paint? The color impression, the light fastness, the color when it's dried. And these are drying now. It seems like they're uh, looking like their original colors. Um, I will say that my paints, when the ultramarine is drying, it's drying, it's um, looking a little bit, the color is shifting slightly. Uh, here with the ultramarine and then the yellow, um, I think the yellow is holding up, and the black seems to be holding up. But now I would love to talk a little bit about cost, and I think this is really a key thing here for, um, you know, for the paint, is let's talk about the cost. So I went ahead and did the math, and then worked out what the cost is of each of these different paints per ounce. So um, one thing that I do is you'll notice that I've got like these... Um, five milliliter tubes um, um, because it's cheaper. I also sometimes will buy my, I throw a lot of paint, um, I sometimes will also buy in like a jar um, and I've also bought a 128 ounce um, bucket <laughs> of paint. So so um, I, I tend to buy in the larger things and it's kind of like if you buy your cereal in a larger container, it's a better a better deal. And then, um, okay, and then Christina, I see you're asking a question. Off-topic question, how long approximately does it take for paintings done in this technique, Dalbism, to completely dry? And, um, okay, so in oil, uh, Christina, it's about, it's actually a couple of years, but they can be shipped after about six months. Um, in acrylics, um, they can be shipped after about a week uh, when done in acrylics. So, uh, I love to work in oil, but in acrylics, it's, uh, it's more of an instant gratification. But hopefully that answered And Oh, Meg, you found the name, Ethan Becker. Okay, I'm gonna look up this Ethan Becker after this, uh, after this live stream and check him out. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go cost. Let's talk about cost here. So if we get our, whoops, oh, that's light fast. Where did my, oh, here, cost. Um, okay, so golden. 
um, it was $45 to get six tubes of gold, and you can get like a little set of two ounce containers and uh, six colors. So it's like a red, a yellow, a black, a white, and um, let's see, red, yellow, blue, black, white, and some other color. Um, and then you get these six tubes, but they're two ounces each, but they're $3.75 per ounce. Okay, so that's the expensive one. But look at my paints. My goodness, $35. So I think it was Megan had asked how much, um, how much do the my paints cost? So look at that. This entire box, um, which has these two ounce um, bottles, each of them is, but you get 24 of these things for $35 plus you get the little paint brushes. Now the paint brushes um, don't look like they're, you know, they don't look like they're perfect. I mean, they've got like some things that would have to be cut off and that type of thing, but they might be okay for use. If you take care of your brushes and you wash them carefully and keep them in water when uh, acrylics when not in use, um, you know, that was a bonus and you get that little palette, but look at that, 73 cents per ounce, huge difference. And then, oh, Megan says that uh, he's very wild. He's also talented. Okay, Megan, I am now I'm really intrigued by this guy. Okay, and now look at this, Arteza, is half kind of uh, between them. So the Arteza box, so this little set from Arteza, this little um, box here of the Arteza paints, $17 for 12 uh, colors, but the colors, they're not, the tubes are not very big. So, um, so these are only um, 0.74 ounces, and this is, a, for example, a two ounce. So you can see much more volume in this one. But I did the math, and uh, you got twelve. You get twelve of these for seventeen dollars, which comes out to a dollar ninety-one per ounce. So if you're making a decision, um, you know which particular paint is right for you for your practice. It may be that you say, you know what? Sometimes I want to use, you know, Arteza or Golden. Sometimes I want to use those. Sometimes I might use my paints. Or you might be like, hey, you know what? I want to go with the most price effective. You know, it's really a personal decision and depending on the project that you're working on. Um, I sell my work in art galleries and so I'm, I'm like, I'm always like, okay, I'm going to be using the golden ones and that's, I'm kind of like obsessed with gold. <laughs> and so um, I do also like the, um, I like the Arteza. I think for me, the My Paints, I'm um, I'm a little bit concerned with the color shift that's here, and then the fact that it's not holding a brush stroke. It's really important in my work that the work be textured and that the brush strokes show. So I'm thinking that for me, you know, golden is still my number one. Um, Arteza is nice to fill in for other things, but for me, I don't think I'm going to go with the my paints. But however, I feel like. Um, if I was maybe getting into painting for the first time, or if I didn't really care about brush strokes, um, then, uh, and if I wasn't necessarily worried about light fastness, I think the my paints might be the way that I would go. So, um, so yeah, I think it becomes a, like a personal decision here. And then, um, okay, and Zargo, you're saying that you can buy the Arteza in bags and they're not all that cheap and uh, you can get Amsterdam standard for less. You know, and the Amsterdam, uh, yes, Argo, that would be an interesting brand also uh, to do a full-on head-to-head test with and just look and see. And Megan, you're saying that my paints look like um, a thicker folk art kind of paint, um, but the Arteza did dry very pretty and absolutely. And then the Golden. Yeah, the Golden, I tell you, it's a, um, it really is a premium brand and it feels so good under your brush. It's got like a, almost a sensual feel under the brush, and you can see that just this really high pigment load that you get with the golden. And then, um, and then Bill is saying, um, if price is an fa important factor, then the my paints could be attractive. I agree, Bill. I think that the my paints absolutely could be a fantastic alternative if price is a factor. Um, I would say absolutely 
go with those, especially because you get these brushes and then you get this little palette along with it. Well, let me grab that palette. You get this little cute little palette with it. And I think the trick with the palette would be just make sure that you wash it out after each use. Um, I happen to love these Stay Wet palettes because um, you don't have to use a mist of water or anything like that because the sponge is just right below here and the sponge keeps the, um, the paint just at the right level of wetness. But, uh, but yeah, and Zarya, you are agreeing too. <coughs> so anyway, I want to go ahead and uh, end the live stream now, and I want to thank you guys all for being here today. It was a lot of fun to give a test and to see what, uh, you know, have these things go head to head and really give them a go and see, you know, is golden really worth the price or not? And I want to thank you all for being here, and I hope that you'll join me again next time in the studio. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Okay, bye-bye.